The name of the message today is Mission Impossible. How can we be just before God? If I were to ask a question, and some of you are familiar with this question, some of you may not be, and listen, we have some uh, younger folks here that don't get to hear me preach all the time. And so I want all the younger people to look up at me right now. Very good. This message is not something that's going to be over your head. Whether you're five or 105, we all need this and we can all understand it. Here's a question. I want you young kids to think about it. I don't want you to answer it out loud. I want you older kids to think about it. Here's a question. If you were to die today, are you absolutely sure you'd go to heaven? Think about that question one more time. If you were to die right now, are you absolutely sure you'd go to heaven? First thing you need to understand is I am absolutely sure based on the Bible you're going to go somewhere besides dirt. The Bible says it's appointed unto man wants to die after that, the judgment. Here's another way to think about this. A thousand years from now, all right, look at, look at me and think about this. A thousand years from now, you're going to be somewhere. Where are you going to be? Well, you're not going to be in this body anymore. I would figure that our bodies would be worn out by then. Amen? We will need a replacement model. Are you going to be in heaven? Are you going to be in the kingdom? Are you going to be in hell? Now, a lot of people would say, well, I hope I'd go to heaven. And to be honest, most of us don't, even believers don't think all the time, you know, today could be the day I get to die. We usually don't think like that. And when we think about where you're going to be, We don't generally think, and most folks don't generally think, oh, I think I'm going to hell. I've asked this question to literally thousands of people. If you were to die today, you're absolutely sure you'd go to heaven. I have a lot of folks say, well, I hope so. I uh, think I've only had one or two people ever say, I am absolutely sure I'm going to hell. And the people that were sure they were going to hell were sure that there was nothing they could do to fix it. One of the people I can think about that, that believed that were told that in church. It's too bad. You've crossed the line you can never come back from. You're going to hell. I can't do anything for you. But most of us and most folks, when they think about where will you be, where are you going if you die, they would say, well, you know what? I've not been too bad. If I think about, do I deserve to go to heaven? I think so. Well, 
if you were to die today and stand before God, they say, why should I let you into my heaven? What would you say? And a lot of folks, and think about your answer, what would you say? A lot of folks would say, well, I'll tell you what, I'm not so bad. I'm not in a, in a bad way. Um, I pray for my kids, come to church once in a while. I don't do to my boss what he deserves. I pay my taxes, mostly, whenever people are watching. I, you know, try to treat my, my neighbors well. Yeah. I think I'm a pretty good guy. I think God would have a pretty hard time sending me to hell. Our passage today is part of a dialogue between a man who has lost everything and his friends that believe he's lost everything because God has quit blessing him because God only blesses when you're living right and only curses when you're living wrong. So if bad things are happening, it must be because you're living wrong. And so the friends, Job's friends, have been going after him. We know the story of Job. We know that here he was. He was doing everything right. He was sacrificing for his kids. He was living uh, right, he believed in the Lord. Uh, he served the Lord, and he gave to the poor. I mean, this guy was an exemplary guy to the point that when Satan was running around, God threw up Job as a proof. Satan, you can't mess everybody up. Here's a guy who is devoted to me. He loves me. And Satan said, give me a chance, I'll turn him. And God said, okay, you have permission, have at it, don't kill him. And so we see Job lost everything, and he's greatly, greatly suffering. His friends have been after him. We know you've sinned. We know you've done something. We know something's wrong. Why don't you tell us what you've done? Why don't you just come clean and tell us why God is thundering down judgment on you? And so there's this back and forth play going on. We come to our passage in Job chapter 9, and we find Job come to a startling conclusion, and it's seen in Job chapter 9 and verse 2. I want you to look at Job chapter 9 and verse 2. I know it is so of the truth. But how should a man be just with God? How should a man be just with God? Job answers this barrage of accusations that said, you know, you must have done something to make God mad at you. Tell me what you did. And Job answered, I don't know what I did at this particular thing, but how can anyone be just or righteous before God? In other words, for those of you who would say, well, I hope to get to heaven because I don't think I've done that bad. I go to church once in a while. I believe in God. I believe in helping my fellow man. I believe in loving others. 
as I would love myself. I, uh, I try to do okay. Job says, it's impossible to be righteous before God because guess what? Though I can come up with some pretty good reasons why I ought to make heaven, why I ought to be just fine, and maybe I could go home and talk to my parents and say, I'm worried about going to hell, and they'll say, listen, you're a good little girl, you're a good little boy, don't tell me that you would go to hell, you're fine, don't let anybody give you a guilt trip. Or you start thinking about those things and say, hey, listen, I'm not that bad. I, I'll tell you what, I know someone's bad. I know this kid I go to school with. Man, he's a bully. She's a bully. They're bad. Or you could say, I know my friend at work, cursing all the time. He's bad. She's bad. Listen, I've seen these folks, these bozos in Washington. They're bad. I can see those folks on my Facebook page. They're bad. I'm not so bad, but Job says, wait, wait, wait. Can anybody be just or righteous or perfect before God? That's mission impossible. It can't happen. You see, because God knows more than anybody else. God knows all those things that you think. God knows all those things that you say. God knows all those things that you do. God knows all those things that you think are hidden. God knows all those things that you think you've, uh, you've kept from Facebook <laughs> or surveillance or anything else. God knows all those things. Can anyone stand before God? No, it's mission impossible. We all stand guilty. And I'm going to show you just how impossible it is in a minute when Paul, or when, I'm sorry, um, Job goes into this a little bit further. But I want you to think about this. You might be saying, well, pastor, I'm not so bad. I'm pretty sure that I'd be okay in heaven. I'm sure God is not so petty as to send somebody like me to hell when there are folks like um, Jeffrey Dahmer that, that have existed and other horrible, awful people, uh, Hitler and all the rest, I'm sure that whatever little idiosyncrasies I've had, God of the universe is not so petty. No, hang on. Let's think about what God calls sin. Sin is two, two things, two types of sin. There's all those things that God said you ought to do. All right, so, I'm sorry. All those things that God said you shouldn't do that you do. You shouldn't curse. You shouldn't lust. You shouldn't this. You shouldn't that. All those things that you shouldn't do, God watches what we do. All those things that you shouldn't say, God hears everything that we say, even if you say it under your breath. And God knows everything that you think, even if it didn't leak out your face. So, sin is anything that God said don't do, say, or think that we do anyway. That's a sin. Now that covers a lot of ground, right? But sin is also anything that you should do, say, or think that you don't do. For him that knoweth to do right and doeth it not, to him it is sin. That covers a whole lot of ground. So thinking about this, sin is anything you do say or think that God said you shouldn't do, or anything you don't do, say, or think that God said you should do, if you would think about that, we sin a lot. Amen? The Bible says, the soul that sins, it shall die. But you say, I haven't sinned that much. Well, if you think about God's standard for sin, though, if you only sin three times a day, 
That's anything you don't do, say, or think that you should do, or anything you do, say, or think that you shouldn't do. If you only sin three times a day, you'd be a really good person. What do you think? Wouldn't you be? I mean, seriously, is there anybody here that thinks they sin less than three times a day? No. I mean, so three times a day, man, that's really good, but I don't think any of us are, are only do that. But let's think about it. We sin three times a day, and that's if you're really, really good. That means over a year, we got over a thousand sins. That means over a 70-year lifespan, we've got 70,000 sins, and that is if you're really, 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 really good. Job, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, says, can a man justify himself before God? No! I can't do it. I cannot be just before God. Why? Because I'm guilty. And God knows more even than I do how guilty I am. So when his friends are saying, come on, tell me, tell me you haven't sinned. He says, I can't tell you I haven't sinned because I have. And you know what? God is a more fierce judge than you are. Mission impossible. To stand before God and not be guilty. It is impossible to be just before God. It is impossible to claim moral strength or virtue. You might say, well, I'll tell you what. I've been raised in New England, and I'm tough, and I'm strong, and I have good, strong fortitude. I have willpower, and I just would never get caught in that kind of garbage that other people get. I read about stuff like Anthony Weiner and all of the stuff that he gets involved in and some of these other crooks and the stuff they get involved in. But I'll tell you what, I wasn't raised like that. I don't live like that. I don't do like that. I'm strong like that. Okay? Job is thinking through this whole idea. Can you make yourself just before God? Verse 19, if I speak of strength, lo, he is strong. If of judgment, who shall set me a time to plead? <laughs> it is impossible to claim moral strength as a virtue. You say, but I am. Listen, I'm just a good person. I've just got it in me, and I'm sure that God's not going to condemn a good, strong, moral person like me. Have you ever sinned? Well, yeah. But again, that's what makes me so strong, is I've sinned, and I can stop sinning anytime I want to. Now, we have finally come to a place where we agree. I believe that you can stop sinning anytime you want to. What's the problem? You don't want to. Therefore, you can't stop. But even if you've got all of these things that you say you've done, hey, God, I'll tell you what, you can't send me to hell because I go to church. God, you can't send me to hell because I've given money in the offering plate. God, you can't send me to hell because I got baptized. God, you can't send me to hell because I've been reading the Bible almost every day for a whole year here with the church. You can't send me to hell. Go to Romans chapter 4 and verse 4. Romans chapter 4 and verse 4.
Now to him that worketh is the reward reckoned. All right, sorry. To him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. We stand before God and we say, God, look at this wonderful thing that I did. God, certainly you wouldn't consider sending me to hell because I spent four hours one Saturday morning working on your church. And you blew the steeple down. <laughs> and the Bible says, dude, you owe that because you've already sinned. And you're not even paying anything back. Don't tell me that you're going to try to work your way to heaven. Don't tell me that you got these things to brag about. Because if you're, if you're trusting that, that's all stuff you owe anyway. You say, well, you know what? God wouldn't send me to hell because I keep the Ten Commandments. Man, I'm so glad you do. All of them? Well, yeah. All the time? Yeah. How do you know? I've never killed anybody. That's one. You got another nine, you know. So did you ever, 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 ever in your life tell a lie? Well, yeah, but generally speaking, I keep the Ten Commandments. But you've broken one of them. Well, everybody has. I think this is the point we're coming to. But generally speaking, I try to keep the Ten Commandments. No, wait, wait, wait. Before, you said you did keep the Ten Commandments. Well, I guess I mean I try to keep the Ten Commandments. So you break some of the commandments. Well, not on purpose. Now, we're not talking about that. You break some of the Ten Commandments. Well, I don't know if we call it break. Maybe, maybe we just say that I bend the rules once in a while. Would that not be breaking, since the rules are not bendable and they're written down in stone, literally? Go to James chapter 2. James chapter 2. Right after Hebrews. James chapter 2 and verse 10. For whosoever shall keep the whole law, let's stop. I keep the Ten Commandments. Really? Yeah, that's how I know God's not going to send me to hell because I keep the Ten Commandments. Okay. Have you ever told a lie? Well, it wasn't a big thing, but I don't make a habit of it. Whosoever shall keep the whole law, yet offend in one point, he is guilty, what's the next two words? Of all. Of all. For he that said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not kill. Now, if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. If you say, I haven't killed, and I haven't committed adultery, although the Bible says if you thought about it, you've done it. But you've lied, as the Bible says, thou shalt not bear false witness, therefore you've lied, therefore guess what? You're guilty of breaking the law. Well, not all of them. No, it's the law. It's a package deal. Either you keep it all, or you are now guilty of it all. So you can stand in your strength and you can say, I'm good. And the Bible says, no, you're not. Back to Job. Job chapter 9. I should have kept my finger in here. <coughs> Back to Job 9, and I think we're going to go to verse 18. <coughs> 
verse 20, I'm sorry. If I justify myself, mine own mouth shall condemn me. If I say I am perfect, it shall also prove me perverse. It's impossible to claim moral strength. It's impossible to justify yourself. See, what happens, how do I justify myself? How can I then, before God, claim to be deserving of hell, or of heaven, and not hell? I'll tell you how we do it. We do it by comparing ourselves with someone else. So, well, yeah, I guess once in a while, I, I may lose my temper a tiny bit once in a while. But not like that bird I saw on Facebook the other day. Man, that guy absolutely lost it. He's in trouble. Well, yeah, maybe I do a little wrong, but certainly not like Emmanuel does. <laughs> I'm just playing with you. The idea is we'll look around and we'll do that, and the Bible says as soon as we do that, we've condemned ourselves. We start judging somebody else, because here's the thing. You ever wonder why we're so quick to judge other people or to pass on bad stuff about other people because as we do it makes us feel better. Because then we can try to try to lie to ourselves and tell us that we're not really the scoundrels and bird dogs that we really are. So here's the thing. What do we need? We talked about this in Sunday school. Job had to come to that point where he said, you know what? I can't justify myself before God. I need somebody else. See, this is where Jesus came in. The Bible says, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, but the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. The Bible says, God commended. That means God demonstrated his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. What's the deal? I can't say, oh, I deserve to go to heaven. I can't say it at all. The only thing I can say is I don't deserve anything. No matter what I try, I don't deserve it. But Jesus paid the price. What's the price? The price is hell. The price is death. The wages of sin is death. If I say, well, I got baptized. I took communion. I go to church. I tie. I, you know, do the sacraments. Any of that stuff. Wrong payment. I'm still condemned. But if I can say, okay, Jesus paid that price. The Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How shall they call upon him in whom they have not believed? The Philippian jailer, what must I do to be saved? Here it is. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Yeah, but what else? That's it. You've got to quit trusting. In order to believe in Jesus, you've got to quit trusting in your own stuff. Quit trying to justify yourself. Quit trying to say, yeah, I'm good enough to get to heaven. And say, I'm not. But Jesus is good enough. And when he died on the cross, that paid my price. So go on to Job chapter 19 then. We see how Job, continuing to think about this, comes to this huge conclusion. No, I can't justify myself, but I still know I'm okay. How do you know you're okay? I still know I'm going to heaven. How do you know you're going to heaven? Because it's not up to me, because I believe 
in a redeemer, someone that paid the price for me. If I were to say, I'm trying to pay it myself, my mission impossible. I cannot stand righteous before God. But if I stand forgiven, washed in the blood of Jesus, that is possible. My Redeemer. As Job is thinking this through, through he says, in verse 23, oh, that my words were now written, oh, that they were printed in a book, that they were graven in a, in, uh, with an iron pen in lead in a rock forever. For I know that my, what's the next word? Redeemer with hey, he says, listen, I can't do it. I'm in trouble. I am a sinner. But I have a redeemer. And he not only can do it, but did do it. Man, that'll work. Going back. To the question I asked at the beginning. If you were to die, are you absolutely sure you'd go to heaven? It is not cocky to say, yes, absolutely. So long as you say, because I didn't deserve it, but Jesus paid the price for me, and I asked him to save me, and the Bible says that if I asked him, and he, I believe it, he did. Then, I can, like Job, say, you know what? <laughs> I don't know why what's happening to me is happening to me, but this is what I do know. My Redeemer's alive. And even though my flesh has fallen off of my bones right now, yet I'm going to have a new body someday, and in my flesh I shall see God, and I'll see him as he is. That's what I know. justified, righteous, on your own, mission impossible. Through Jesus Christ, mission possible. Have you trusted in a Redeemer yet? Yet.